This is a large blue butterfly, or the closest we're going to get to one, given time of year and the fact that they're very rare and only found in very specific locations. Throughout the 19th and early 20th century they were a prized part of any butterfly collector's collection given their rarity and beauty. However, by the middle of the 20th century numbers of this beautiful butterfly were in rapid decline and by the 1960s conservation efforts were kicked into full force. Areas where colonies of this butterfly were found were closed off completely from human and farmland use. However, numbers kept declining. By 1979 this beautiful butterfly was extinct in the UK. So why did the conservation efforts save the large blue fact? Well, it was only through the painstaking work of Jeremy Thomas, a doctorate student that spent hours every day for years studying these butterflies. He would observe and meticulously note down what he saw. The general life cycle of the large blue is well understood. As a caterpillar, it releases pheromones, which fool ants into thinking it's one of their larvae. And so they bring it back to their nest and look after it. An ant's nest is well guarded and a very safe place for a caterpillar, as long as that you're not eaten. And it sustains itself by eating the ant larva. Jeremy Thomas realized that um, the pheromones released by the large blue were particular to a certain species of ant, Myrmica sabaletti. Um, a red ant which thrives in uh, areas of grassland that are trimmed, especially through grazing. So the conservation efforts to keep these areas completely pristine, clear of humans, cows, sheep, had actually cemented large blue's fate. How is this relevant to whether ecosystem-based fisheries management is realistic or aspirational? Now conservation and uh, fishery management, two branches of the same tree. They both aim to preserve a species, albeit for different, um, different reasons. The example of the large blue can be compared to single stock management within fisheries. There was only considering a single species, uh, adopting a number of targeted singular approaches in order to preserve the species. And indeed, this single stock approach can be seen as a success in some lights. Less than 20% of the world's fish stocks are overfished. Some major e ecosystems remain unexploited and overexploited systems um, are now showing signs of recovery. However, the success is as limited as the approach. It only considers the population of the stock. Fisheries and their stock um, have a wide variety of impacts and the metric for success should be broadened accordingly. This is the basis of an ecosystem-based approach, incorporating environmental, ecological, social and economic factors within the management aims. Why? To have robust populations and healthy ecosystems that will benefit society beyond simply uh, maximising the output of the target stock. So, what's the catch? Pun intended. We still struggle with single stock systems, so what hope do we have for uh, creating sustainable management solutions for a much more complex system? And this is a complex system that we have yet to, to formally model to a practical degree. All of the indicators that um, you measure to judge whether an ecosystem is healthy or not. With single stock management you can use size, you can use age to characterise the stock, but when looking at an entire ecosystem, what are you going to consider? And there's a number of further issues. International cooperation, the necessity for a cross-disciplinary approach between biological, economic, social sciences. You have lack of data or access to data. The equipment required to get the data can often be very specialised. Translating the science into a manageable way for stakeholders is often a, a difficult task. But we're living in an age of continued technological revolution. We have equipment now and techniques now that we could only really dream about only 10 to 15 years ago. The rise of biotracers, biotelemetry, AIS data and video remote surveillance systems. We have as much data as we can want or need, both on the ecosystems and on the pressures affecting them. I can go on my phone right now and I can track a number of tagged sharks around the world, along the coast of America and Australia. Amazing! So it is a fallacy to say that we don't have enough data, or even to say that the systems are too complex. A single species model with age structure, time varying catchability, dynamic fleet representation, variable recruitment responses is more complex than a three species model with simple interaction between them and fishery removal. And our computing systems are getting better as well. There is a, a computer model called INVEST, the Integrated Valuation of Ecosystem Services and Trade-Offs tool. 
This has been developed to consider a wider range of factors necessary for ecosystem modeling. So, we have everything we need to start. Ecosystem based approaches protect against irreversible damage. The example of the large blues should serve as a warning against single stock considerations, both in conservation and fishery management. They consider more stakeholders than just the fishers and consider the wide variety of affected natural resources. In my mind, ecosystem based fisheries management is more than realistic. It's necessary to ensure the sustainability of our natural resources.